So what a game that was as Alabama escapes with the victory in Austin, Texas over the Texas Longhorns in a game where we have got a lot to talk about from how Alabama ended up winning the game, what Texas did well, what Alabama struggled with, and everything in between. But before we can, as always, y'all know the drill, I need to hear from you. Hop down to the comments, why for yes and for no. Were you surprised by everything that happened in this game? And then let me know your thoughts on the game. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification as I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it, and we're on a push to 15,000 subscribers. I'd love to have you a part of this awesome community. And if you enjoyed this content, be sure to like and comment down below. Those interactions, though seemingly small, are massive to content creators such as myself and both getting picked up and maintained by the YouTube algorithm. But... Having said all that, let's jump right into this, and we need to start with the good, and we'll start for Texas. And first and foremost, Sark had an unbelievable day play calling, especially with Quinn Ewers in the game. Because the first thing that really stood out to me was Sark was really aware of how he wanted to attack this defense. He wanted to get the ball out quick to effectively nullify the pass rush for Alabama, and if you tuned into the live stream last night, that's something we talked about, that Texas would probably look to get the ball out fast, get the ball out to their playmakers so that they could start chipping away to open up the deep shot. And even on the deep throws, Quinn was getting them out quick because he was throwing them with anticipation. So even when Texas was testing Alabama deep, they were doing so quickly trying to eliminate any presence of that defensive front for the Crimson Tide. A front that actually showed up today and was able to do their part, but we'll get to that a little bit later. For Texas, Bijan Robinson was able to get some things going in the running game, but for the most part, Alabama's defensive front was able to stifle the run for Texas. However, Bijan was able to get it going in the passing game with over 70 yards there, and I don't think anybody was surprised at all when they saw Bijan get work in the passing game. He is an elite player within college football, genuinely one of the best players in the game, and it should surprise nobody when he's utilized to a high degree because he is a difference maker, make no doubt about it. Another name we talked about heavily, both in my video and in the live stream last night, was Jatavian Sanders for the Texas Longhorns. Though a young player, player, this kid has got a bright future. He is a mismatch. He is a matchup nightmare. And I've talked about this for so long, how tight ends in these modern offenses are going to be a pain for defenses. And this is a dude that is going to be a straight up menace for defenses all year long. Now it goes without saying, I hope Quinn has a speedy recovery. I hated seeing him go down because he was playing lights out. And you love seeing a young quarterback at home with the crowd going wild with a real test in front of them and you're answering everything they're throwing at you you hate it when in that situation someone gets injured so I really hope everything turns out all right for him that he'll be able to come back because man he was playing really good football when he was in I can't wait to see what the future holds from him because he was having himself a day and it goes without saying on the outside Xavier Worthy is as dangerous as a threat as they come Alabama had so such a tough time covering him, which very few teams in the nation are going to be able to effectively one-on-one -on -one cover Xavier Worthy if this Texas offense is humming. He's too quick, his routes are too good, he's too creative within his routes. This Texas offense has got a lot that they can hurt you with, and this offensive line, though there's still young pieces on it, it is an improved unit from the year before, and especially when Sark is dialed in the way he is today. Play calling to get the ball out quick to effectively eliminate any threat of the pass rush. What a great play calling display for the Texas Longhorns, and it made complete sense when they were in this game in the waning moments, even without their starting quarterback, because they found a recipe to at least get in the red zone. Now, at the end of this game, the only thing I think Texas wishes they would have done different is when they were in the red zone, I would have gone for some of those instead of going for field goals. The reasons are simple. First and foremost, you were able to push the ball. You were able to get matchups you liked because Sark was really out there scheming and the play calling was working. Secondly, Alabama's offense was able to get next to nothing going except for the opening sequences of this game and the closing sequences of this game. The rest of it, they really were unable to do anything. Texas could have taken advantage of that because if you choose not to go for the field goal and instead to go for the touchdown on fourth down, in the case where you don't get it, 
you're still in a situation where Alabama's backed up deep in their own territory, and now they have to drive at 90-plus yards. And this was an Alabama offense that, outside of the opening few possessions and the closing few possessions, was not able to generate anything in terms of production. And the Texas offense was able to get plays and matchups they liked because, as I keep talking about, Steve Sarkeesian was scheming this game and called a heck of a game. Whenever we flip the script, though, and talk about Alabama's offense against Texas's defense, this is where it gets interesting because I'm never going to sit up here and pretend like I'm some genius X's and O's guys. I'm still learning so much in college football, which genuinely is what makes this so much fun, is how much there is to learn and the willingness to want to learn it. But one thing I can say is there was a world of difference in watching Steve Sarkeesian call plays and then watching Bill O'Brien call plays. Alabama had the rushing attack going early in the game and just ran away from it and tried to go deep so many times to establish something there when their offensive line is experiencing the same exact woes we saw from the offensive line a year ago. They're not able to keep Bryce up with any sort of consistent time. The wide receivers were not able to generate much separation at all, and in the cases where they were able to generate separation, drops raised their ugly head once again, the exact same problems we saw from a year ago. You're very, very hard-pressed to find too many games where one team is going to have 15 penalties and still come out on top in a game where they're not generating anything offensively. So at the end of this, what were the good and bad for both teams? And we'll start with Alabama. First and foremost, I thought the defensive line for Alabama held up their end of the bargain. They were able to hold B. John Robinson, someone who I consider to be one of the best players in all of college football, not just offensively, but defensively as well. He is an absolute chess piece to under 70 yards on the ground on over 20 carries, and they held him to 2.7 yards per carry. That's something I think you got to be proud about. And if we're talking about the Texas rush as a whole, Alabama was able to stifle the Texas rush and hold them to 2.4 yards per carry. Yeah, Bijan got loose in the passing game, but it's Bijan. He's a chess piece, and it's Steve Sarkeesian. He's going to scheme and get him the ball, and deservedly so. He is that much of a playmaker. The other area I thought Alabama did well was Bryce Young being able to stay composed, even though the offensive line is showing the same inconsistencies from a year ago, and the wide receivers weren't able to consistently get separation. And even when they did get separation, drops showed their ugly head once again. Now, the one thing I wish Bryce would have done more of in this game is if the opportunity to get yards running the ball presents itself, take it. Bryce is a capable runner. I'm not saying he's Vince Young or Kyler Murray, but he's an athletic quarterback that can get first downs when need be, something I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of. If we're talking about the bad for Alabama, first and foremost, the discipline was not there at all today. In fact, it was probably the worst performance I've seen in terms of discipline from a Nick Saban coach team. There were so many penalties. Alabama kept keeping drives alive, and in a lot of ways, they were able to affect the game, but not in a positive way, in an incredibly negative way that Texas was able to benefit from. The other area that was bad for Alabama was the secondary, an area where Texas was able to win a lot of matchups, and Alabama's going to have some decisions to make on who those cornerbacks are going to be. Kool-Aid made some plays. Terry and Arnold, I think, actually played really well. I'd love to see more of him, but that was an area where Texas was able to get theirs, and yes, Texas has got really great playmakers on the outside. I've been saying it all summer long, so if you've been listening to my content, it shouldn't come as a surprise, but still, they were able to win the battles at an alarming rate, something that Alabama was not expecting whatsoever. For Texas, what was the good? First and foremost, play calling. I thought Steve Sarkeesian was incredibly dialed in today. We know what an elite offensive mind he is, and he just reminded everyone again today. Secondly, the playmakers for Texas, they have got a ton of them. Whether we're talking Jatavian Sanders, whether we're talking Xavier Worthy, whether we're talking Bijan Robinson, Roshan Johnson, Keelian Robinson, Kane, Whittington, there are so many playmakers Texas has at their disposal, and they have a young offensive line, but if their offensive line can continue to grow, which they have a great offensive line coach in Kyle Flood, this is going to be an incredibly potent offense. The only thing I wish is that Quinn Ewers has a speedy recovery and that he's able to come back this year because he was having a great day. The only bad I can say for Texas is in the final two drives defensively, they were playing a little bit softer than I thought they were the rest of it, but outside of that, the only thing I can say bad for Texas is the fact that you exit this game with your starting quarterback experiencing an injury, something we never want to see in college football. It's just really sad, and as I continue to say, I do wish him a speedy recovery. 
But this was a great game if you're a Texas fan because Texas came out there. They were not scared of Alabama. They took it to Alabama, and they answered a lot of questions today. Texas showed up and played, and they can leave this game with their head held high. Alabama gets the win today, but at the end of this, there's a lot that they're going to have to go back to the drawing board and address, both offensively, defensively, special teams. This Alabama team has got a lot of work to do if they want to get anywhere close to their aspirations at the end of the season because today Texas showed them they're mortal and they have got some work to do and Texas took it to them. Great game. Can't wait to hear from all of you. Hop down in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. That's it. See you.